Hello, can you hear me? Everybody okay? Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Nicholas Ayala, Senior Manager for what is Multimedia Sales for Miami Office ESPN. For us here in Miami, what's our, our role here for the company mostly is to be a buffer between U.S. Hispanic audiences and international territories. That's really where our forte is here in this region. Uh, our specialty right now is Latin America. Uh, the, that's basically what we really focus on. A lot of what you're going to see and what I think is going to be relative to you is how ESPN as a business that you think is already a monopoly and huge is how we continue to grow. And it's really the growth for us comes in the international sector and how we continue to go very targeted towards fans of different cultures, of different nationalities that all live within one big continent. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit of how we do that. So a lot of this is what you see. Uh, there's an ESPN 1, 2, and 3. There's no Ocho yet in Latin America, as we've said in the past. Uh, we're available on websites, mobile apps, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. We're everywhere. And that's very important because in sports, you have to be everywhere. Uh, it's not just consumed by watching a live game. A fan consumes sports at all times. So uh, I think I forgot the, uh, the clicker. No, no worries. Thank you. So what we do very, very well is creatively connect brands to emotionally engage fans in a live, premium, and uniquely multi-platform environment that's only suitable for that to reach that of a sports fan. For us in the region, we're number one in the, as a whole in terms of television reach. We're number one in terms of video views on websites, uh, partly because of the fact that we do have a television company that produces video 24-7. We do cuts of any sports center. There's possibly 20 video cuts that comes just from one sports center alone, so it, it gives us a lot of power, power in this particular medium. And digital, for us, Uniques is one of the, we're number two, okay? One in every two fans views our brand as experienced, trustworthy, passionate, and respected. That's very important because in this world of everybody wanting an influencer, of everybody wanting to be behind somebody that is a credible speaker, a credible brand, that's something that, that we offer to advertisers, partners, vendors, you name it. Now, when it comes to television, for us, we reach about 97 million people. That was last year across the continent. 60.4 million in terms of household penetration. Now, for us, television and in sports in general, it's not just like the United States of America. The United States of America is one fan, one ESPN that gets broadcasted. That people love NFL, people love baseball, people love basketball. You got the three core sports that everybody loves. In Latin America, it's different. What a Mexican love is, is completely different than that of an Argentinian, that of a Colombian versus that of a Brazilian. You have to be very localized in terms of your content. So for us, we have about 12 or 13 different commercial fees that target individual markets across the region just for television. When you look at digital, we have about five to six different editions that target Mexico, Central America, Chile, Colombia, you name it, because again, each one is different and everybody has their own preference. So this is a sense of our scale. Latin America is huge in terms of digital penetration. Sports is very popular in this region, just like it is in America. So for us, this is probably the, one of the biggest growth sectors in, in our company has been the, has been the digital world. Uh, we don't really have that issue of, well, you know, a lot of subscribers are leaving TV to digital. Well, that's part of our formula. Without digital, without social media, we don't really exist on a television platform. So everything kind of works together. For us, a lot of uh, advances has come in, in broadband play. Uh, here, Watch ESPN is now embedded in, in the app. It's pretty much probably in 50% in of your phones for you to be able to watch live sports at any point, at any time, from anywhere. That continues in Latin America as well. Our apps have grown significantly year in, year out, and that's pretty much one of our biggest growth sectors in the digital platform specifically. Social media, well, I mean, our talent is an influencer. Our talent is one of the biggest influencers in what is sports. They're credible, they're, they're the authorities, they, they get the scoops before others. And that's really what social media is all about, is trying to learn a little bit more about the, the teams that you follow, the players that you love, and being able to show that to your buddy to show that you know a little bit more than they do. And that's really one of the biggest, most impactful parts of our social media, is that the scoop before it comes on on .com and before it comes on on TV. So, 
This looks different than where it looks in the United States of America, right? Um, U.S. rights are different. There's a lot of money in play. There's a lot of different preferences that Americans have versus that in the international world. But for us, soccer is king, hands down. In Latin America and in U.S. Hispanic audiences, soccer is number one. So we have to buy rights to all the major European soccer clubs. Why European? Well, basically the leaders of every Latin American country are in some club team in Europe. Can't name me one club team that was in the UEFA Champions League that doesn't have a Latin American in it. So basically a lot of Latin Americans follow their players when they go and they go to Europe. It's just a natural, it's a natural habit of theirs when they follow soccer. They like their local teams, but they also follow their national heroes. And that's why we invest in these, the Champions League being the biggest one of them all. Now, tennis and golf are very important for premium aspects. You know, a lot of our luxury brands, such as Mercedes, um, Rolex, invest heavily in this sector because our, our region loves, you know, they love to buy things. They love very expensive jewelry. They love fragrances. They love luxury products. So this is very important for us. American sports, they're important for us too. NBA is the most global of them all. It's the one that reaches the best across all regions. MLB does the best in what is the Caribbean. Let's call it Mexico, Dominican Republic, Venezuela. Even some islands in the English-speaking Caribbean, like Curacao, are very important for Major League Baseball. NFL, as we saw in Mexico this past year, with, in October, or in November, I would say, when, we, when the Raiders played the Texans in Mexico City. Huge game. Probably the number one sport that we actually have over soccer in Mexico. This year, New England Patriots will be facing the Raiders in Mexico City. We're still trying to figure out and make sure it's a Monday night football game, though, so that we have it on ESPN. Uh, Colombia has been killing it in cycling. There's about three to four different Colombian cyclers right now winning all the major cycling events, and that's been the real big draw for them. Uh, their leaders are now in the cycling world. No longer is it just Hamas. You have IndyCar, MotoGP. A lot of Colombian riders in IndyCar, such as Juan Pablo Montoya, has tested their waters in this. MotoGP, the only one of all these events that you see on screen that actually have an event in Latin America, the Argentina GP, which is hugely popular in, in Argentina. X Games for us is great. Millennials love it and Brazilians love it. So Brazilians are the skaters. They're the ones that are doing great in vert. So the more and more that we popularize international sporting events and we purchase the rights to these is how we are able to engage our fans. So a lot of what I want to show you now is how do we do it. So I have a few cases that I want to explore that have different brands that had different goals and, and really wanted to showcase what a partnership with ESPN and with sports could be all about. First one is Pepsi that I'm going to show you. Before you click the video, I'll let you know. No worries. Um, Pepsi last year became for the first time an official sponsor of the UEFA Champions League. All right, so there is a three-year cycle for the UEFA Champions League in terms of some sponsorships. They started last year, and they really went in, they wanted to do a big bang for their summer push. If you notice, last summer, Pepsi had a bunch of emojis all over their bottles uh, that represented summertime you know, fun, all sorts of different customizable emojis. They even had an app full of Pepsi emojis. So what we did is we brought that entire campaign to life within the semifinals and the final of the UEFA Champions League. So let me show you how we did it. You can press play. Expressing your emotions using emojis has become a popular form of conversation. Pepsi wanted to join the chat, so it designed its very own series known as Pepsi Emojis. This was the first year of Pepsi's official UEFA Champions League sponsorship, an elite club football tournament packed with intense passion and emotions, the perfect vehicle to highlight the new Pepsi Emojis. Pepsi partnered with ESPN to develop the multimedia strategy that brought these emotions to life through the use of Pepsi emojis and hashtag Dilo con Pepsi throughout Champions League match days. We began with a social poll asking fans to share their thoughts using hashtag Dilo con Pepsi for topics related to the day's matches and were promoted across ESPN handles in the pre-match TV show. Pepsi was then integrated into the heart of the match conversations by sponsoring the halftime analysis and by encouraging fans to express themselves with Pepsi emojis on social media. After the games, ESPN placed emoji cans on desk and developed a custom Ask the Experts feature that had on-air talent using Pepsi emojis to share their opinions of the day's action. 
Online display and pre-roll ads were rotating across ESPN.com to extend campaign reach. ESPN's social accounts use Pepsi emojis and memorable images to recap the fun and emotional moments from the day's matches. The results were incredible given the campaign's short burst of activity. Polls garnered a total of almost 23,000 votes, while social media efforts reached 1.3 million fans on Facebook and delivered 655,000 impressions on Twitter. It had 7.6 million impressions on ESPN.com and generated 1.4 million video starts. TV integrations reached 1.9 million people 18 to 34 across Latin America and had even higher numbers in markets featuring local players. In the end, Pepsi and ESPN gave fans a unique voice with hashtag Dilo con Pepsi and the new emojis, all while organically integrating the brand into the heart of the UEFA Champions League. So that was one that shows you how really all those numbers were generated in five days. Five days, the days that they actually played. That's the, that was the, the preface of Pepsi, was that you can only put me on when they play. I don't care, they play on Tuesdays and Wednesdays to give you a sense of a champion, so they didn't care about Monday or Thursday through Sunday. They just wanted game day, and we did it. We blasted them on game day across every medium, and that's how we surrounded them, and we got reach where they didn't watch it on TV, then we got them on social media, and if not, we at least hit them with and they were checking the scores online. You follow and you surround the fan journey throughout. So it doesn't matter if you just have TV. You could also do social, you could also do digital. Just surround the game day. That's the number one point that we try to give everybody, surround the day. The day is very important. Um, New Balance. So a lot of people think Nike and Adidas are automatic partners for ESPN, but actually New Balance for us is one of our biggest partners. Uh, they themselves, as you know, they're trying to, to compete against the two large monopolies. Uh, they're doing very well in a certain sector, which is that niche of runners. And they've actually expanded a lot in terms of buying uh, sponsorship of teams, local teams in, in Central America and in Latin America as well. So they have about three different teams and two internationally. So they're expanding. So we're trying to give them a role of credibility within sports to match that of Nike and Adidas. If you could click the first video only. There you go. ¿Cuál es el futuro del deporte? ESPN y New Balance están un paso adelante, enfocándose en lo próximo para contarte sobre innovaciones tecnológicas. Próximo es presentado por New Balance, Always Impera. The beta campaign was basically very good for us when we said, we tied them to a concept called Próximo. Próximo is basically the next level, what's coming next. So based on that, the beta format is always something that's coming next. Nothing necessarily tested already, but it moves forward. So this is a way that we, on television and on digital, basically just reminded everybody that New Balance is that technological partner. This is one of my favorites. It's a personal, one of my personal projects. It's where we work with MasterCard. It's a seven-year running program so far. That's pretty difficult in this day and age to keep a client for seven years doing the same thing. I'm sure all of you guys could uh, protect to that. But we reinvent ourselves year in, year out with an original production that we go to really harness fandom. Um, we have a lot of, you probably are very familiar with 30 for 30 programming in the United States. Those are a lot of our documentary films. What we've done is we've done a travel fan documentary that basically, in conjunction with MasterCard, we give three fans across Latin America the priceless experience of being able to go and experience the UEFA Champions League in person and live. For a fan of Mexico, Colombia, and Brazil, that is an experience that is very, very difficult to come by. Anybody here is a difficult thing to come by just because of cost and, and overall logistics. So together, MasterCard is an official, again, of the UEFA Champions League. I say that because that's our NFL. UEFA Champions League is huge. It's the biggest property that exists. So working together with that, we created a travel program that gave fans the opportunity to go experience this for the first time and have a priceless experience. That priceless experience is just what MasterCard wants, to make sure that that brand continues to be seen as such. So I'll show you a nice little case study of how, what we did. For six years, MasterCard and ESPN have explored priceless football cities with Capitales de Football, the documentary series which has now reached 17.6 million fans across Latin America, mixes travel and sport while providing MasterCard with the ideal platform to showcase all of its brand benefits to consumers. 
With the latest season came a fresh, modern look and feel for both MasterCard and Capitalista football. The branded content experience was taken to the next level by organically integrating as many MasterCard assets as possible, from priceless cities to local merchant partners, utilizing priceless surprise formats and featuring platinum card benefits, all revolving around our mutual sponsorship of the UEFA Champions League. We explored Latin American cities through the lens of three local protagonists who all share an underlying passion for football. ESPN's cameras were rolling as local heroes delivered the priceless surprise of a lifetime. A trip to Europe to experience the semi-final and final of the UEFA Champions League live. From the protagonist's arrival at a five-star hotel to the Uber ride to the game, MasterCard played a pivotal role in every step of the journey featuring pre-game meals in restaurants and exclusive experiences in each city. ESPN worked more closely than ever with MasterCard to conceive a multimedia campaign that was executed using the social engine philosophy. Teasers, trailers, vignettes, and custom promos for each episode ran across ESPN's multi-screen platforms to drive audiences and generate awareness of the new season. We upgraded the series' Facebook page and collaborated for joint amplification efforts across social media. The results were stronger than ever as Season 6 reached 3.8 million people, growing 3% year over year. The growth was due to the new format's strength in capturing affluent sports fans as pan-regional ratings grew by 94% within Platinum's core target. The media campaign over-delivered on every estimated KPI, impacting the masses with over 31.9 million impressions across all platforms. The TV media campaign reached 6.5 million people 18 plus, of which 30% were affluent and 50% of them between the core ages of 25 to 54. Our digital campaign delivered 4.7 million with a strong video completion rate. Finally, our social media collaboration set the tone for future efforts with 1.7 million impressions and over 25,000 actions. With the bar set higher than ever, the stage is now set for the seventh season of Capitanes de Football as fans across Latin America await MasterCard's next priceless experience. It's cool, we actually conceived this campaign in that room over there with MasterCard over there where we came here and we did a brainstorming together. It's very important to have clients that are open, clients that are willing to explore with you because without that, things like this won't occur. Uh, the last one out there, um, I'm sure there's a photo for the guys out there too, for, no worries. Um, it's the body issue. For us, the body issue is something that you see here in the United States. It's been something that's extremely popular. Uh, it actually had to delay a little bit in Latin America just because of values a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's nudity in Latin America a little bit more than there is in, in, in the United States of America. But this type of, of imagery with your, fit, with, your, with your heroes wasn't necessarily something that was deemed great for the region. We launched it about three years ago and then we tied it together with Gillette and the Gillette Body Campaign. They have us body scrub. That's all about, you know, refreshing your body. Well, better than the body issue to work it out with and to launch it in Latin America. So this is a great campaign of how using functional benefits of your product and just being able to tie it to a, to a real brand portfolio such as the body issue worked out. Please, last video. Prepared to launch its latest product in Latin America, it faced a formidable challenge. How do you promote a razor designed specifically for men's bodies in a place where the concept of male body grooming is foreign? We needed to challenge male grooming taboos and decided to do it through eminent opinion leaders such as professional athletes who excel at sports and are body groomers as part of their professional preparation. Por primera vez en Latinoamérica. Celebrando la forma atlética como expresión artística del cuerpo humano. ESPN Body Issue. Presentado por Gillette Body. Diseñada para el terreno del hombre. The first ever ESPN The Body Issue Latin America. Presentado por Gillette Body. Uncovering some of the region's premier athletes through an artistic lens. 
The campaign culminated with a 40-plus page digital magazine featuring 21 athletes, over 70 bus-inducing images, and six region-specific covers through a multimedia platform. ESPN got fans excited about their hometown idols showcasing the human body as a fundamental sports tool. The barriers and taboos were broken down as the dialogue began on ESPN premier studio shows. Results were outstanding. Gillette body awareness metrics dramatically improved by increasing 200% in brand awareness. Sales were positively impacted with a 61% increase in blades and razors category, with the body issue being downloaded 330% more times than the average ESPN magazine. It was an instant success. So in summary, guys, my point with sports is be very relevant, be on game day, surround the game day before, during, and after. It doesn't matter whether you have rights to a league, rights to a player or not. You could always surround it in some way, shape, or form as an official or non-official. And if you have the opportunity to be something very in your face, such as the body issue or with Gillette body, do it. Because in sports, it's just as literal as a translation as it could be, and it could be very, very effective. So that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions? Come on. Um, I noticed that, um, and especially in the, the marketing campaign with Pepsi, there was a heavy reliance on um, including multi-channel marketing, so traditional marketing and digital marketing. And I'm curious to know, since major corporations usually rely on traditional marketing, where do you see the trend going with major corporations incorporating digital? And do you think that the trend will be more, more towards digital and less of a reliance on traditional marketing? I see a lot of, I, I don't do a campaign now that doesn't include at least one form of digital. It's always a TV plus digital video, TV plus display, TV plus display digital video. That's always a combination. Social media now, the boom has been even bigger because what we do is we ask, it's a formula that we have, it's called social fuel, where you fuel a topic of conversation on TV and you drive that conversation using your social media handles to have everybody react to it. And then at the end of the day, you share their best reactions or the best posts on television. It's almost like a symbiotic relationship nowadays. No longer is it just everybody working in a silo. Every, every, I have to do a campaign. A post has to make sense with the in-game feature that I'm putting on that will make sense with the homepage takeover that I'm doing. It all works as one. I see it as... The trend is that there's no stopping this trend. It's all going to be one, TV, digital, social. That's, it's, it's a complicated world right now. It takes me a lot longer to do proposals nowadays than it used to. 